Sabah everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about the brand new ColorOS 13. We're going to cover all of the new features, some of the optimizations, the new UI elements, but not only that. I also want to share with you guys when will your device be receiving this update. We're going to talk about the rollout plan. So this is TK and this is all the new features of the ColorOS 13 running on my Find X5 Pro. Let's check it out. Like and subscribe and make sure you hit that bell icon so that you're always notified to whenever we have new videos on the channel. This is the Find X5 Pro. I've been using the Color OS 13 on this for the last week and a half and overall it's been running pretty nicely. Um, it's actually pretty stable. We received three updates since we first got it installed and overall uh, the performance is pretty good. I didn't lose my data when I installed it. Obviously when you get into a beta, typically your data migrates pretty nicely. Although when you jump out of a beta, unless you're moving to a new version, that sometimes may cause a concern. But overall just be aware if you're thinking about getting this and applying to get into the beta program. Uh, the wallpaper is something that we're going to talk about. We're going to talk also about the fact that the new typography, the new uh, customizations, the app updates. Uh, we notice everything here is basically just running exactly the way we've seen it before, but uh, with a little bit of an aquamorphic feel into it. And that's partially into the animation. Uh, overall, app drawer is still in there. We have access to the shelf here, which we now get access to all of the different customizations that we get in there. A notification panel also got a little bit of a revamp. Still have the ability of using all the normal toggles, a prominent media player, as well as a little bit of a customization of switching users as well as active application that we can also customize or access directly from there. Uh, but overall, as far as what we see here with the typography, the icon pack is the new one, and that's going to be the default one, the aquamorphic icon pack. We can still jump into a more of a material view, download your own custom icon packs. But overall, I really like uh, the way the infographic information is coming, but also the animation behind it. So let's go ahead and swipe back. And what I mean by this is like when I'm swiping away, you'll notice that nice motion, very nice, very smooth. Opening the Google feed does the exact same thing, bringing down the shelf very nicely. And we see all the, uh, this also kind of permeating throughout the actual settings tab. Now, of course, this is ColorOS 13. This is still technically a beta version, as you could see right there. The device name is Opal Find X5 Pro, storage obviously from the 256. The 8 Gen 1 is going to be the processor here, 6.7 inches, 5,000 milliampere, model number, all the different things. But I like the customization that we have here then from what we've seen before. We have the camera configuration as well, not only just the back, but the front facing camera. Android 13 is going to be powering this. And of course, if we click it and then just switch over, and since 13 is not something we can see on the, on the clock, you actually have to put it to one o'clock. Once you do that, it gives us access to this. And of course we can customize, change, and you just have to basically keep pressing the background. And there's so many different options that we can do here as far as Easter eggs. It's definitely very, very nice. And of course, all built uh, with ColorOS optimizations, of course. And of course, go into the Recents app. You notice everything just runs smoothly, very, very nice. And you can see no stuttering, no issues. And it's been running really nicely for the last week and a half for me. So overall, Although this is technically a skin on top of Android, this also goes beyond just being a skin with a smart always on display. And we're talking about basically some new optimizations. You'll notice uh, a nice friendly face here with the Bitmoji that's been integrated. We also have some AI functionality to be able to kind of give us access to, let's say Spotify on the lock screen and so on. And we'll cover all of that. But at the end of the day, ColorOS 13 is an evolutionary upgrade, simple to use, easy to use, and of course, intuitive at the end of the day. Let's start off by talking about the control center because I feel like this is a big part of what we do on a daily basis. So overall, we have a separate toggle for Wi-Fi and mobile data. Of course, we can expand it. We have access to the four, three additional rows that we can basically scroll through. We have access to a prominent media player that works very nicely. So let's go ahead and basically say we'll run Spotify because we're gonna have that nice integration there. I'm gonna start the music. I do have it muted, so that's one of the reasons why you don't hear it uh, but you can see here that it opens up i can pause i can play i can skip track it works pretty much the same way you'd expect and it's prominently sitting there and of course we can also talk about basically where does the audio go up from there so a customization level that we haven't seen before one of the other things that i like about it is the ability of checking in on active applications so we can see that spotify is running in the background I don't see it, but if I don't want it to run, I can go ahead and hit stop there and then alleviate that from the background process. I can also do uh, basically different switching between multiple users, editing tiles and so on. Um, all the other options in here are typical to what we've seen before. We have access to multi-screen connect, airplane mode, uh, of course, nature tone display. Kids mode is also there. We're gonna talk about that in a little bit. But other than that, we have pretty much standard configuration, access to the microphone, access to the camera, 
all the things that we've seen in the past they look very very nice so very simple very easy now one of the things we'll also notice is that the shelf is now part of the ui element and that's the ability of adding widgets into it and customizations we've seen this before on other devices but we finally have it as part of color os 13. you can add additional widgets and of course you can remove different ones depending on your customizations uh, you can add shortcuts for dialer uh, this is my wall basically my camera reel uh, cleanup uh, step counter and of course this is spotify dj mix and time zone if you like to always know what time it is in different countries you can open it up there and speaking of that we can also jump in here and look at the actual customizations of what we see here so as far as the clock itself it has nice new uh, basically almost like a reflective effect and of course a new typography that's built in there now again notification panel still there the shelf is part, uh, part of the system there and of course app switching is going to be very nice so we're able to basically just say go into google play store we're still able to use uh, the basically the functionality of jumping make it into a pop-up window and of course uh, dock it or even open it so i can put it to the left open it up or i can just close it if i don't need it a lot of good things there, simple, easy to use. We're going to switch over now to the always on display. We're actually talk about some of the new things that they brought in with customizations when it comes to that. So we're going to swipe down. We're going to go into the settings tab, swipe down, go into wallpapers and styles. Same section. We have the same options that we've had from ColorOS 12. Always on display, themes, icons, font, color customizations as far as quick settings, uh, fingerprint animation, as well as edge lighting. Now, the one thing we see here is wallpaper. We're going to jump back at that in the first second. But we're going to talk first about always on display. The always on display gains some AI functionality. And what I mean by this is contextual information is now a function that we can add so that we can in interact with, let's say, something like Spotify or even the ability of basically hiding context from, let's say, somebody looking over your shoulder. And now, that functionality is not working, but the Spotify functionality is, and it is definitely very nice. And you can see here, you can jump in and it'll give you the list of the supported apps, although Spotify is one of them. We'll definitely be able to access it from there. Other than that, we can jump into more display settings, customize that information there. And then, of course, now we can see that we have Bitmoji front and center that's been added into the system. So Bitmoji always on display. Very nice. You can customize your avatar. Uh, log into Bitmoji if you're using it through Snap. Log in there, customize it. And then once you customize it, you'll start getting some of these really nice uh, animations depending on what you're doing. So now, obviously, I'm just chilling. But let's say I'm charging my device and let's say I'm just using my device and, and enjoying music. And so you'll notice right out of the box, it knows I'm listening to music and it knows automatically. Now we'll go ahead and lock the screen. Let me just go ahead and lock it. Go to always on display. And we're gonna interact with the uh, here. So this is the Spotify widget. It's built into the always on display. I can skip tracks. I can go back, pause music, start music. And of course, I have some shortcuts for other uh, media. And of course, I can just let it go back and it'll go back home and go back into the normal setting. And as you can see there, it's, I'm playing a piano now because that's what we do. Now, although Bitmoji is something that we haven't seen before, we have access still to Canvas, obviously custom patterns. You can customize your pattern to make it. Text and of course, emoji. Now, the emoji one we've seen before, you can click it. You can customize your own emoji or of course, use your own. I've been working on mine a little bit and you can customize it to basically become your centered experience. So in right now, I'm using it. You see where you using the bitmoji i can jump on and use omoji and of course just say apply same experience shut it off and let the always on display kick in and now we're running the omoji the spotify playlist here still works and it works the exact same way we had it before so those are a couple other things we have a canvas that i've created before and of course the custom patterns that i've done in the past some of the other options that they added in here is uh here we have the insight uh, always on display as well as the homeland always on display the Homeland one is a little bit more of a reactive uh, kind of wallpaper, or at least an always on display. And what I mean by that essentially is that it'll customize the experience based on what's going on. So you'll see it right there. It runs very nicely. You can customize this one. Uh, you can also jump in. We'll go back down here and we have an additional one. We can go with the penguin. We can also go with obviously the uh, coral with the clownfish in there. Definitely very nice. And the last one, of course, is the Insight wallpaper. And this gives us the ability of seeing exactly how much screen on time we've had throughout the day. Now, one of the main benefits here, of course, is it's more of a visual effect and it runs right on your lock screen. So you know exactly how many times you've unlocked your device. And as time goes on, it kind of goes from the top to the bottom, as I'm showing you guys with that quick animation that we have. Very nice, very simple, and of course, added in there. And it looks really nice. Now, the last thing we're gonna talk about here is, of course, is the Blossom wallpaper. Now, the Blossom wallpaper kind of works like uh, the Insight wall, uh, always on display, with the exception that this actually runs on the lock screen and on the home screen, and it gives us the ability of having a visual effect of a set time limit. What I mean by this is you can customize it to be, let's say you're, you wanna do basically about four hours a day of screen on time, or being four hours on this device. 
if you set it to be at four hours what will happen essentially is that at the beginning of the day the blossom will actually start as a small plant and grow over time when you reach the four hours it'll blossom into a full plant and then if let's say you go over those four hours it start going into more of a platinum color so a visual indicator exactly of how many times you're using it which gives us the ability of actually getting a better understanding and being more mindful of how long we're sitting on our device and looking at a screen. So it gives us the ability of relaxing, stepping away maybe, or just basically taking a little break so that we don't have to be on the device for too long. Definitely very nice. So between that, the Spotify integration, the Bitmoji, the inside uh, AOD, Homeland, uh, the Blossom wallpaper is definitely very nice. And I really like it as you see there uh, with that nice little demo video that they shared with us. Now, the next feature we're gonna talk about is multi-screen connect. This is something that we've seen in the past with Oppo. Uh, and of course, this gives us the ability of sharing our devices display with other devices. Specifically in the past, it was always limited to PCs. Now, one thing I will say that the Oppo Pad Air, the brand new tablet that Oppo released, will also feature multi-screen connect. And that will work with ColorOS 13 on this device. And the benefit there is the ability of sharing files between your phone and your tablet wirelessly without having to have a wire connection. And it kind of works similarly to what we've seen on the PC as I'm showing you guys with this demo, since I technically don't have an Oppo Pad Air. So if I do receive one, I'll definitely be able to share with you guys that experience. Uh, transferring files, uh, controlling the device, running multiple applications, pop-up windows, all of those things run the exact same way. And I love the fact that it's now integrated with tablets as well as PCs, making it an essential tool for multitasking and of course productivity across tablets and PCs alike. So we've talked about the multi-screen connect and definitely very nice. We have that built in there. One thing I do want to talk about that now right now is something called auto pixel light. Now this is something that is really, really cool. And what I mean by this is it helps us actually privatize information in a shared text. Now, when you're looking at the screenshot, typically what we have is the ability of basically going pixel light. Now this gives me the ability of customizing things in my myself, or we can go into more edits and then jump into mosaic here and then give it the ability to do auto pixel light. Now, you'll notice auto pixelate automatically pixelated my name, the contact picture here on the, on the far left, as well as some additional information, which probably didn't need to. But the overall experience here is that now I can share this without necessarily sharing private information included. If I miss something, let's say I wanna pixelate something else in this conversation, I wanna omit that, I can keep it in this format. And at this point, I can just say check and share, and it works perfectly fine. So the auto pixelate functionality works really nicely, and it's very easily accessed when you take a screenshot, or if you wanna edit a picture directly from your live library you could just access it and edit and of course customize and of course pixelate whatever you don't want to share and not have to basically you know mark up everything now the next feature is something that i definitely enjoy because i sometimes do share my device with my son and that's going to be called kit space now KitSpace is sitting here as an application. You can run it directly from here, or you can go directly into the notification panel and then run it as an app. Now, once we jump into KitSpace, uh, this is basically a customized UI element that's tailored by us for our kids. Meaning we have specific apps that we give them access to. We can go in there and jump into the parental controls. Of course, all connected and all configured with our own security application. Uh, added apps, timeline, uh, basically eyesight uh, protection. This gives us the ability of allowing the device, making sure that it's in a bright environment, not a dim light so that people don't have to, uh, to focus too much. And of course, helps with the eye and create a home screen shortcut. So it makes it very nice. And of course, they can only access this and they cannot jump out of it. If you wanna take it out, you wanna exit, same thing. You put your credentials and you're able to jump back and go home. It's an easy way to be able to share your device with your kids without worrying about them deleting your content, you know, sending things or accessing things they're not supposed to. And of course, it allows them to get the full benefit of ColorOS 13 and of course the Find X5 Pro or whichever device you're using. Now, the next feature I wanna to talk to you guys about is the meeting assistant. Now, the meeting assistant, unfortunately, is not currently working on my device, but what the intention behind the meeting assistant is uh, something to help us focus on the experience of being in a meeting, meaning being in a conversation, a video call or so on. The system recognizes that state and minimizes uh, background processes to be able to make sure that that connection runs very much in a priority mode and also minimizes the amount of notification that we get to bombard us, to distract us from what we're doing. It's an automatic function that's built in, part of ColorOS 13. Unfortunately, I don't have it running here to be able to demo this for you guys, but as you're seeing with that little clip I'm sharing with you guys, it's really more focused to be in the background and less in front of you, and that's one of the main benefits. With all of these new features, I'm pretty sure you guys are wondering, when will my device get this? Now, obviously, first and foremost, the Find X5 series is gonna be one of the first ones to get it, and that's what's coming in in August right now. So the Find X5 Pro, it's gonna be part of the first 
first rollout or first wave of devices getting color os 13. of course that means the find x5 as well and of course in september we're looking at the find x3 pro the reno 8 pro october we're going to be rolling out to the 8 5g the reno 8 the reno 7 the reno 7 5g the reno 7 uh, standard model 6 5g and so on and of course as you see there that's the entire list of devices and when they're expected to receive the color os 13 update make sure to freeze the frame here if you'd like to be able to look at that and make sure to get that information for your specific device at the end of the day i'm excited and i'm also very happy to see that oppo is focusing on not only sharing color os 13 as far as access and beta and letting us test it out but also the ability of letting us know when our devices are going to receive it the optimizations that we see here are simple, they're easy, they're intuitive. Uh, there are definitely an uplift, there are a different uh, approach from what we've seen last year. The aquamorphic approach here is definitely very nice. You're still able to customize your system. You're still able to change your icon pack, customize the icons, uh, customize the colors of the UI elements, do a whole bunch of things that we've done in the past. It just has another layer of uh, basically animation that makes it just look very smooth and very silky. Now. This obviously is running on the Find X5 Pro. I definitely want to see how this runs on other devices. So I'll be waiting to see when those updates get pushed out and hopefully be able to provide you guys with a little bit of an update on that. Um, as I'm always excited to see how this ColorOS, uh, as far as an operating system, runs on the high-end devices, but also runs on the, you know, the mid-range and entry levels. Because those are the things that we always, you know, want to make sure that we're getting a smooth experience. And of course, uh, ColorOS 13 has been doing it very nicely. Since ColorOS 11, 12, I've been very surprised with what Oppo has been able to do and I cannot wait to see what they do next. So I do want to say thank you very much to Oppo for sponsoring this video. And of course, thank you for checking out this video. Let me know in the comments below, what do you guys think of ColorOS 13? What is that unique feature from what I've shown you guys today that you would love to see that on your device? And have you seen your device list? And let me know, of course, when will you be receiving your update? For me, I'm excited to see here, obviously on the Find X5 Pro, the Find X3 Pro is going to be coming up next month. The Reno 8 is going to be coming up as well, the Reno 8 Pro. So there's a lot of nice things, obviously the brand new device first but it's that other extended list that i'm excited to see so like and subscribe as usual thank you very much for the support i'll see you in the next video